Ubisoft just released the patch notes for the upcoming patch 4.3, dubbed the mid-season reinforcements, scheduled to be deployed today on Tuesday, September 13. They claimed they will have these intermittent type patches again in future seasons, which strongly suggests that we will definitely see more content for the game in year 2. For now though, we can enjoy a ton of new changes to the game. Three reworked operators, new gadgets, new attachments, weapon balancing and bug fixes to annoying issues. First up is Twitch, who has been a really good operator and a personal favorite of mine for a while now. Mostly due to her incredibly good farmers, but partially also because she provides you with free drones overall. While her shock drone wasn't particularly good in itself, having it as a third mobile camera totally made it useful already. The coming change to Twitch will do away with this tactic, but replace it with a potentially better one. She will now get two shock drones instead of one, while not getting any regular drones at all. One of the shock drones will be deployed in a preparation phase, like we had been teased about previously. The second one will be in her inventory when she spawns. This will allow her to destroy outside cameras before the round even starts, allowing the attackers a pretty stealthy approach. To make destroying the cameras easier for the drone, they increase the range of the taser darts from 5 to 7 meters. It also moves just as fast as regular drones now, creating less sound, and it has no more ridiculous blinking red light on top. These straight up buffs to the drone seem like very reasonable buffs. The change of giving her two drones while taking away all the regular ones is very interesting and we will have to wait and see how it plays out. Blackbeard on the other hand has been hit by a nerf. And holy hell is it a nerf. For one, you can now see the shield's HP on the UI, which is a great quality of life change. He also gets two shields now and he can cycle through them. You're probably thinking, that's not a nerf at all. Well, the strength of the shields have been reduced from 800 HP to merely 150. That's barely more damage than a heavy operator can tank and less than 25% of what it was before. It will definitely fundamentally change how Blackbeard requires to be played. Instead of being literally invincible when being attacked from the front, players will now have to react quickly when taking fire to their shield. Unless they quickly get a frag on their attacker, their shield will break and they will be caught with their pants down. Personally, I never really had a problem with how Blackbeard was previously. Any situation where I died to him I felt like I could have positioned myself better. He's slow, pretty predictable and really has to aim straight at the enemy to have an effective coverage from his shield. We will have to see and wait how it plays out, but honestly I'm thinking that Blackbeard might become a pretty rare pick now. Maybe this will have the side effect of making real shield operators comparatively strong again. The last operator to be reworked is Doc. Doc has always been pretty dependent on Rook. Since Rook's armor plates increase the likelihood of going into a down but not out state and Doc's gadget depends on people being downed, he's only ever being picked to complement Rook. Picking Doc on his own always kinda seemed like a waste. Basically it just came down to his gadget being way too situational. Ubisoft apparently saw it the same way and decided to give him a lot more abilities with the upcoming patch. From now on, Doc will not just be able to revive teammates or himself, he will also be able to straight up heal teammates or himself, providing 40 HP a pop. Since this ability can be used at any time, it will be consistently useful, not just in niche situations. 40 HP honestly is a lot, so I'm confident this will make Doc a popular choice from now on. Casual players will love to heal themselves, while teams will appreciate the added survivability in intense matches. Ubisoft didn't just stop there though. Should your healing target have more than 60 HP, they will be overhealed for the leftover mount, for a maximum of 120 HP, limited to a short period of time. If you are overhealed, your HP will tick down by 1 HP every 2 seconds. Overheal is an entirely new mechanic in Rainbow Six and it sounds pretty cool. I can only really see it being useful in niche situations though. Most attacker weapons hit pretty hard and at most it will only allow you to survive one additional bullet. It's very exciting to see Doc become a more active and viable operator soon. I just love playing with him for the white gloves honestly. One thing that totally hit me out of left field is the addition of two new gadgets to the game. Four attacking operators will now have access to a claymore mine a deployable gadget providing them protection from roamers or while in a dangerous position like using their drone. Thatcher, Twitch and Thermite lose the ability to use stun grenades while gaining the ability to use the claymore mine. 
Glass loses breaching charges and gains a claymore mine too. You plant a claymore and if an enemy crosses one of the three laser rays it will explode in a directional pattern. This one could be a total game changer to be honest. People have long been suggesting some sort of barricade equivalent for attackers, allowing them to notice flanking roamers before they can shoot everyone in the back. The claymore should nicely do the same job, just in a more brutal fashion. I dig it, and I look forward to using my new and improved shock drones on Twitch, being safe in the knowledge that a claymore is covering my back from Cavera or Bandit. The second gadget being added to the game is an impact grenade for the defenders. An explosive impact detonated grenade for defenders. Oh boy. Ubisoft describes it as being perfect for close range firefights when things go south and it can be used to open holes in the environment. Now I can see where they're going with this. At this point way too many defenders have access to nitro cells while just abusing them to open walls in a preparation phase mostly. The impact grenade should offer a good alternative to this. I'm all for more choice, so I'm very happy to hear that Cavera and Smoke lose their nitro cells in favor of impact grenades. However, Castle and Rook gain them too. And the wording here is important though. Impact grenades. In the clip they're using to demonstrate the impact grenades, you can clearly see Rook having a total of two in his inventory. So it is safe to assume that they will have access to more than one impact grenade. Castle and Rook didn't even have nitro cells to begin with. So all in all this change is going to massively increase the amount of explosives defenders have access to. I'm not sure how I feel about this at all. Their radius and damage might be tiny, but by definition impact grenades will always kind of hover between being too weak and therefore useless, or too strong and therefore very frustrating. Other than this, no Tachanka buffs still. Oh well. In brighter news, finally our choice of attachments has been widened as well. Last patch we got the angled grip, which was a cool addition. Now we will get the muzzle brake attachment for lower first shot recoil. This will be great for high recoil weapons such as Buck's assault rifle and the marksman rifles in the game. The heavy barrel on the other hand will increase your recoil. So why would you choose it? Well, it's the first attachment in the game that will actually change your damage output. It lowers the fall off damage, resulting in a 10 to 20% damage increase at long ranges. Like all attachments, this will be limited to selected weapons. I can already see it being great on Ash's R4C and Jäger's Carbine though. I think this one will be for me, I'm very excited about it. We also get a few minor tweaks and weapon adjustments, which I completely agree with on paper. Valkyrie will now only carry 3 black eye cameras instead of 4. 4 cameras always seem a bit excessive to me, especially considering how much better than regular cameras the black eyes are. Our shielded friend uh, Montagne will now be able to undeploy his extended shield twice as fast, actually giving him a reasonable chance of defending himself when faced with an enemy. Hopefully he won't just be an invincible spectator in a room now, but actually pose somewhat of a threat, other than looking menacingly. In Rainbow Six Siege, all operators, except for Glass, get a choice of at least two weapons, yet for many there's not really a choice at all. Some weapons are just flat out better than others. Now Ubisoft is looking to change this. This might secretly be the most exciting change in the whole patch for me. Since Ubisoft no doubt has access to extensive usage statistics for everything in the game, they buffed all the right guns. Twitch's DMR now sports higher damage and lower recoil. Buck's DMR now deals more damage. Fuse's LMG now deals more damage as well. Ash's G36C is now more accurate in all respects. Recoil rises slower, maximum recoil is lower. The P90 was already a fun choice for me, albeit clearly worse than the MP5. I just thought it was kind of a fun weapon to use. Now I will have even more fun using it. Lower recoil, especially on the first shot, which was a bitch on this gun. The MP5 will still be easier to control, but the P90 should have overall higher DPS. Sounds like a pretty good choice. Mute's MP5K was different. No choice of ACOG for it meant it was a bit weak overall, so it will now have slightly lower recoil and slightly higher damage. Frost C1 was just a very weak weapon compared to her incredible Super 90. From now on it should do a lot more damage, just as you would expect from such a slow firing gun. And finally, 
poor Blackbeard still hasn't had enough. His gun of choice, the Mark 17, will be nerfed. The deployed rifle shield will now have much less of a positive effect on its recoil and make Blackbeard a lot harder to use. Team killers will also be punished harder now. This seems to be a big problem on consoles. I hope these changes deter team killing a bit more from now on. Other than all of this, we will see a lot of critical bug fixes, such as for an issue where the game picked the wrong data center for players, resulting in incredibly high latency and possibly hit registration issues. All the bug fixes are way too many for me to reasonably list in this video, so I just put the link to the patch notes in the description for you. Ubisoft's patch notes so far have always been pretty exciting and I especially like how in-depth they are. They really go into their thought processes and ideas which is much better than just throwing things out there and having people guess at their intentions. This patch in particular is shaping up to be a major shakeup for the existing meta, kicking Blackbeard from his throne, making bad gadgets finally viable and adding a bunch of new gameplay elements. For me, the patch can't wait to hit soon enough. By the time you see this video it might already be live, so go and enjoy the new Rainbow Six.